What's up YouTube, your host Peter back with you again for another video. This marks the very first tutorial video on my channel. I want to start doing a lot of these. I want to share my knowledge as a cinematographer and a filmmaker with you guys. So in this video, I'm going to show you five tips to instantly achieve more cinematic footage. Cue the footage. As I stated in the beginning of the video guys, I'm going to show you five tips to achieve cinematic footage like you just saw previously in the B-roll segment. And these tips will be able to be used uh, with no purchases required. Um, whatever camera you guys have, whatever camera you guys are using, these tips should apply to everybody. So you shouldn't have to spend a dime uh, assuming you guys already have a camera of some sort. Um, so in the beginning of this video, we're gonna show you guys one of the most important things in getting cinematic footage, and that is tip number one, shoot in a flat color profile. So what this means is you want your footage to be desaturated, um, zero contrast, and no sharpening, so that way you have the most raw video file to work with when you take it into your editor later on to really turn that footage around and make it look how you want it to look. And the simplest way to do this is to open up your camera's menu setting. For this example, we're gonna show you how to do it on DSLR, but it's pretty universal between all cameras of this nature. Even phones, you can do it with them as well. There are apps you can download that allow you to shoot in a log uh, or flat color profile. So we're gonna open up the menu of our DSLR and then scroll over to the picture styles and then go down and select a user default picture style, hit the info button there so you can edit those settings. And first we're gonna take the sharpness all the way down, then move down to the satur or I'm sorry, the contrast, take that all the way down, and then move down to the saturation and take that all the way down. And now that you have your flat color profile set up, we're gonna lead into tip number two, where you shoot your footage. And for this, one of the best ways to get a cinematic shot is to make sure that your shot has a depth of field. Use that to your advantage. Make the background blurry. And the easiest way to achieve this if you're using a DSLR or any kind of camera with lenses is to make your aperture very wide open, ensuring that that background will be blurred and it'll do the separation there of your subject to the background and give it like that nice cinematic look like I'm showing you now in this footage that I shot. Here is a before with no depth of field and then an after with the depth of field and you can really see with these two shots side by side the difference you get in terms of cinematic quality just by having that depth of field and if you don't have a lens to do this with and you're shooting on for example a phone that doesn't have um, aperture control then what you need to do is just get really close to your subject or zoom in to compress that background and create a natural blur and there are also apps that you can download for the phone that will allow you to achieve a similar effect as well. Tip number three is going to be lighting. Now you don't need to have actual professional lights to achieve lighting in your shot, cinematic lighting. Uh, one of the best sources of light to use to your advantage is everyone's source of light, the sun. Um, daylight is one of the cheapest, if not the cheapest, and easiest way to light a shot naturally without having to go and buy a whole bunch of lights and do a bunch of setups. As you can see in this example right here, our actor is lit by a window to his right. And then we're gonna show you two variations of this shot. One with just the window light coming in, leaving some contrast on the uh, left side of our actor's face. And then with a bounce board off screen to the left, bouncing some of that daylight back so that way we have a nice soft fill on the left of our actor's face to complement the lighting coming from the right. And I think that ends up in a much more soft and pleasing um, cinematic result. And you can bounce light with anything that's white. You can get a white t-shirt, um, a white poster board, anything that is white that can reflect light is all you need. So you guys should be able to do that for very, very cheap if at no cost at all to help you achieve an even more cinematic look when you pair that with the depth of field effect that we talked about in tip number two. 
So now that we've used the knowledge from the first three tips to create a cinematic shot with our camera, we need to take that footage into our editor of choice to do a color grade on it, to give it the look and feel that we're going for in the story that we're trying to tell that'll really finalize that cinematic look that you guys are going for. So without further ado, let's move over to the computer. Now that we are in Adobe Premiere, this is my choice editor. Um, you can get a free trial for Adobe Premiere uh, for 30 days. And if you really want to keep using Adobe Premiere, you can always uninstall your entire OS and then reinstall it. And then you can keep using that 30 day trial for Adobe Premiere. But if you guys are really serious about editing, I do recommend just getting the subscription and getting Adobe Premiere. But these um, effects and color grading tips can be applied to any NLE. DaVinci Resolve is a free color grading software. Um, so yeah, you guys can use this. These tips will apply to any um, editor of your choice. I just happen to prefer to work in Adobe Premiere Pro. So what we're gonna do first is go and drag in the two clips that we are going to use. And I believe this is uh, the other one. Yes, all right. Don't need the audio there. Okay, so as you can see, these clips come in in the log profile that we shot them in. We have the nice depth of field effect behind our talent um, in this shot and as well in this shot. And if you also notice, um, it's not only a depth of field from behind, but also the foreground. You can see um, in the right hand corner of the screen, the plant that's also um, in front of our, our character also is blurred. Uh, so having that separation there with foreground, middle ground, background really help make it feel a lot more cinematic as well. But that kind of stuff is going to be for a different video where I go a little more in depth on um, composition. So now that we have both these in here, we can do something really simple, um, which would just give us a basic overall nice look on our footage. If you go over to the basic correction tab in metric color, and then you go to the input LUT, and I'm going to select the one that comes with um, Adobe Premiere. It's Alexa Default Log C2 to Rec 709 color space. And once we pop that on, you can instantly see with on, off, and then on again, that we get a really nice, just all around basic look for our footage. Nothing crazy, just kind of very natural looking and how it looked when we shot it. Um, and we'll do the same to this clip, apply that input LUT again. And it just gives you a very nice base look, which you know, some people might be okay with this. You can do a little bit of tweaking over here to the contrast, exposure, highlight, shadows, um, black levels, saturation as well. Um, but for me, I, was, I like to really stylize my shots and make them feel unique and, and give them a, an actual look that um, isn't always so natural looking. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're going to go back to our input LUTs. Now the LUTs that I'm going to be using um, were actually got from Triune Films by Film Riot. They did cost money, but you can get free LUTs and I'll make sure I put a link in the description below to download free LUTs. They will not be the exact same ones that I'm using, but LUTs just kind of serve as a lookup table is what they stand for. And essentially they, they just give you a starting place for your footage. They give your footage a specific look or feel and then you from there will tweak that look or feel to fit what you're going for but it just kind of gets you a good starting point um so you don't have to go through all of that process yourself so the one that i found that i really enjoyed with this footage was the interstellar um log lut so we'll pop that on and here's with it off and then on again so you can see it gives our footage a kind of a greenish blue um tint but you can see our skin tones still are are somewhat there they're not entirely wiped away by the grade whereas if we used a more um intense grade for example mad max fury road that one also not too bad but you can see it really does change the footage there would definitely be some work you'd want to do on the skin tones um and like a really bad one would be like the ring where it totally washes out your skin tones and everything in your footage with this. And this would be um, a more longer form tutorial to go into depth with skin tones and separating that from your grade itself. But we're gonna go back to our interstellar log LUT. And then from here, we can come over to the basic correction tab. But first I wanna go to my color wheels down here because I wanna go to my midtones, um, which will be mostly our skin in this shot. And I want to drag that up towards the orange red a little bit. 
um, to kind of bring back some of those skin tones you can see before, after. Um, kind of gives our character a little more life. And I'll even drop the levels of the mid tones down just a bit for a little bit of contrast there. Um, I'm okay with my shadows and highlights where they're at. And I'll go back up to the basic correction tab. Um, we can add a little more contrast. Um, let's take the shadows up a bit, give us a little more detail there, and then bring the blacks down a little bit. I'm thinking that looks pretty nice. Um, we can leave our highlights there. I like the highlight roll off we're getting over there on the top right of his forehead. And um, hmm. let's see, if we go to our curves adjustments, um, let's go to green. Let's go to the shadows down here. Take out a little bit of that green in there. I think that's looking pretty nice. Go back up here to our color temperature. Maybe give it a little more warmth to the shot. And yeah, that's looking pretty nice. So we can see a before. Oops, I'm sorry, wrong tab. So a before the grade, and then an after after the grade, you can really see how much that spices up the footage. And if we do duplicate this. And then we reset or delete the elementary color. We go here and we do our basic Alexa Rex 709. You can really see the difference in the two, how this is just very bland and boring looking. And this shot just really has a lot um, of just pleasing colors to it. And just really looks nice. And what we're gonna do now is copy our elementary color grade, go to this shot and see how well it translates. And obviously, that does not translate to this shot very well at all. So, what we're gonna do is, I still like the interstellar LUT with this shot. We'll go to our color wheels, and we will bring those midtones back up again towards the orange and red. Bring down a little bit. Go back to our basic correction and once again add a little bit of contrast. Up our shadow detail, bring down our blacks to counteract that. Let's mess with our highlights a little bit. It's okay. We bring the exposure down. And that's not looking too bad. Maybe go back to our color temperature and warm that up a bit. And then, like we did before, we'll go to our curve adjustment, go to the green, and we are going to pull some of that green out of our shot. And right there, that shot is looking much, much better. Yeah, I'm liking how that's looking. Let's play it a little bit. See, and before and after, this really, really adds a nice feel to our footage, gives it a, a good look, and um, the style that you pick will depend on the story you're trying to tell, but overall it just makes the footage look very nice. So that is tip number four, color grading guys, and the final tip I want to give you is cinematic bars. These will really make all of your footage look very, very, very good. So what we're gonna do first is go to the effects and we are going to add first an adjustment layer, sorry. And then go to effects, crop. Sorry, actually first drag that adjustment layer on our footage. Okay, now I'll go to effects, crop and drag that on. And we're going to do for the top about uh, 14 and the bottom about 14. And then now we can position our footage kind of in these black bars. Oops. Can even bring that 
down just a little bit more just once. Is that maybe? Yep. That looks really nice. And then same for this shot. Let's maybe go down a little bit. See how that plays out. Yeah, and that just really, really, I think, just adds a um, nice cinematic look to the footage in the end and just really helps everything kind of come together and uh, look really, really nice. So that I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I hope it helped you guys figure out how to get more cinematic shots with ease without having to really think about it too much. These are just simple ways that I think will help anyone just if they want to get something looking very cinematic, apply these to your shot and you're at least guaranteed to have a very pleasing looking image right off the bat to work with with little work required on your part. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like down below, comment, let me know if there's anything else you guys want to see tutorial wise for me. I plan to do an entire cinematography series um, sharing my knowledge that I've learned over the years uh, being a cinematographer and working with cameras and I can't wait to share that content with you guys and as always I will see you in the next video.